Cram is calling this final elite men's race. Well, the guys, as you saw, they're ready and waiting. And as I said, as far as the team overall challenge is concerned, Europe, Europe are in a dominant position. And one athlete I haven't really mentioned, who we may well figure for them here, we'll come on to him in just a second as we see the introductions, because I'm sure Garrett Heath will get a big welcome here from this Edinburgh crowd. As we said, three wins, two in the short course, and then last year with that, uh, which it was still a shock really to see, although as Paula rightly pointed out, his prowess on the country to do it over 8K against Mo Farah was a bit of a shock. Now, Aras Kaya, another former uh, Ethiopian, uh, sorry, <laughs> Kenyan running for Turkey, representing European Kaya, again, dominant at the European Cross Country Championships, where Callum Hawkins chased him home. Brilliant. 2016, that ninth place at the Olympic Marathon, and of course he led that race for a, a decent time as well. Well, he's going to have to get used to that, isn't he? Sir Mo Farah, introduced to the crowd, and there, well, you don't need to keep repeating his phenomenal performances over the last six years. So where they go then, the men's race over eight kilometers. That's two short laps and then four long laps. Mo Farah taking on last year's winner, Garrett Heath. Throw in there, Kaya, the European cross country champion and the local favorite, Callum Hawkins. And an intriguing race in prospect I think we have here. And no surprise really that right from the beginning to the cheers of the local crowd, Callum Hawkins slips himself into the lead, has a little look behind and Garrett Heath not too far away. And as Paula was discussing there with Gabby, the conditions do have a real impact in cross country year on year. Courses, ground underfoot, and it doesn't, you know, different conditions means that certain athletes can thrive when they're on other conditions they don't. And it'll be really interesting to see whether Garrett Heath is able to repeat that brilliant performance last year on a firmer, a less muddy course this year. At the end of the day, though, you know, the pedigree that he's shown, that Hawkins has shown, Kaya has, obviously Mo Farah has, I'm sure will come to the fore here. Andy Vernon just moving up on the outside. Good, strong British contingent, just quickly go through them. I mentioned Farah, Hawkins, Vernon, of course. Dawi Griffiths, Ben Connor, who ran well at the European Championships. Young Mohammed Mohammed, who moves up from the junior ranks, picked up a bronze medal individually. He moves up to represent Great Britain seniors for the first time today. Johnny Taylor from Morpeth, Charlie Holson, Alex George, Ellis Cross, Jack Martin and Graham Rush. So a big British team. And as I said, I'm not sure they're going to be able to drag themselves back in to the lead in the overall team challenge, but they'll want to finish ahead of the USA and Europe here if they can. Well, Paula, you, I'll, I'll begin with you. Brendan's ready to pick up the mic. I'll be, actually, both of you didn't mind going to the front, did you, in your careers? And uh, he's never fearful. The one thing Callum Hawkins runs with is a complete and utter lack of fear. He always has respect, but he has no fear of anybody. Which is absolutely the way that you need to attack cross country and indeed marathon running. You need to have that respect for the distance, for the courses that you're racing on, but not be afraid of it. And I think Callum's lack of fear, if you like, comes from his uh, confidence in the preparation and in the training that he's done. And he knows he's in the shape of his life. He ran really well through last year, went away and built on that again in Fahama, um in his altitude training stint before the European Cross Country Championships, came out and really committed to racing there as well. Wasn't afraid to, to go with the leaders and to, to cover the moves and absolutely racing like that again here today. Well, well you, Brendan, we're used to seeing Mo Farah not necessarily being at the front when the Olympic 10,000 metre gets underway, but um, already Mo is well back in the pack. Have these guys gone off a little quick here? A couple of short laps. Pearson, we wouldn't expect to figure. And Callum's getting sucked in a little bit to kind of racing him in these early stages. They've gone off really, really quickly. They've gone off too quickly. They're going to have to settle and slow down. It's eight kilometres. It's a good distance. It's six laps to run two short laps and then four long laps and you can tell by the cadence of Callum Hawkins 
that they're going really quickly. And if you look at the gaps that are opening already, it just tells you that this race has started with a fierce pace. And Pearson, the American, surprisingly, has decided to take them on. And he's acting like a pacemaker at the moment. He's working hard, he's running hard. But Callum Hawkins, who when I saw him on the start line, there's Mo Farah right in the back of the group. They've just taken it to Mo. And maybe maybe the fact that Mo's in the race has given them a, that, a little bit of extra urgency. But they've gone off far too quickly. And they certainly will have to slow down soon. Yeah, 2.51 that first kilometre, and uh, given the fact that you've got another seven to go, that was pretty swift. It is cross-country, and you should always have to be a little bit careful about times, but that's quick enough. Garrett Heath right up there, but it's interesting when you think of how good Aris Kaya, the sort of form he's in, he's happy to sit back, maybe watching Mo Farah a little bit, but Mo is right back in the pack. There he is, just going through. He's a long way back. I would have expected at least to see him at the front or near the front of that chasing pack, accepting that these three have really put their foot down early. Uh, but Mo at the moment, a long way. Not so much in terms of distance. Well, actually, is quite a distance, isn't he? <laughs> Paul is looking and thinking, yeah. Um, but anyway, at the front, already two of the pre-race favourites, Callum Hawkins and Garrett Heath, just opening a little bit of a gap up. Let's put it this way, it's not exactly an intentional um, sitting back and controlling the field as we've seen so many times on the track. This is really people taking the race to Mo Farah and at the moment he's really struggling to respond to that in any way. I wonder if there was a little bit of team tactics going on there in that Pearson really got the ball rolling on that first lap and now Garrett Heath can build on that but he would have been a little bit surprised probably to see Callum Hawkins say no, you're not having it your own way, I'm going to come in there too. Well, as we see these two at the front in our first big competition of 2017, you can see uh, scrolling through underneath there all of the athletics you'll be able to watch on BBC right throughout the summer, in addition to all of the events, including those trials for the World Championships and the Diamond League in London before we head back to that same stadium for those World Championships. All of the Diamond League races throughout the season, you'll be able to see highlights of all of those as well on the BBC, so plenty of athletics to look forward to right the way through until September. So, it all begins here. What a year we hope is in prospect for Callum Hawkins, of course for Mo Farah, but today, not often you say this as we've uh, been saying, just waiting for his name to come through. There he is, 16, 12 seconds down. So Mo has started. Uh, very, very slowly by his standards. Well, the others have started very, very quickly by their standards, but we haven't seen Mo Farah in the middle of a pack like this and coming under pressure for a lot of years. His early career, he used to win occasionally and he used to lose sometimes. His recent career, he tends to win races. And if he doesn't win them, he's right in contention. But here, I just noticed Callum Hawkins looking over his shoulder after the first lap and a little smile across his face when he saw the fact that the gaps were opened and the great Mo Farah, and he literally is the greatest athlete we've ever had, in the middle of the pack, 12 seconds behind, and Callum Hawkins, the man who grew up last year. There's Mo working, to, working hard. He's always known about working hard. That's what he does. That's what he's always done. And you can bet your bottom dollar that wherever he finishes today, Mo will give an account of himself. He'll be 100% committed to the, the event. He may not be as fit as he normally is, and he certainly isn't, won't be as fit today as he will be in August and the, in the, in the World Championship in London. But there's Mo Farah, athletes around him. A slight look of disappointment on his face there because he's out of, the, out of contention so far. And Callum Hawkins is running as an excited young man in front of his home crowd. He's got good athletes from America behind him, but he's doing the job. And the Americans are indeed packing well, 28 points after two laps, uh, two short laps, a long way to go. But actually that deficit they put between themselves and Europe means that overall the USA are back in front ahead of Europe. As I said, Great Britain not really, I don't think, going to lift themselves more, trying to move through the pack at the minute, but it's all down to Callum Hawkins at the front. So it's Hawkins, uh, now career up there with Garrett Heath, and again, we're with uh, Chilanga as well, uh, Kabenai and Korea, and indeed Hilary Bohr as well, the American team full of Kenyans, most of whom went there to college and have been there quite a few years and eventually been given US citizenship, now competing for US. 
But Mo, a long way down there. And I bet you it hasn't been too many years that uh, Ben Connor's been running alongside Mo Farah after a couple of miles in the, in the cross-country race, but Mo just starting to move a, a, a little further up the field. Well, if you look at him closely, as we just did there, you'll see a different look on his face. He looks, he looks as though he knows he's not in control of this race today. These three guys have got a big lead now, and it's up to them to decide how this race goes. Mo's so far behind now that he's got to actually commit to the race himself, but these guys have to slow now, otherwise Mo's got no chance of catching them. But if you look at Callum Hawkins, he's, he's, done, the, he's done his homework. You know, he's a marathon runner. He's run an exceptional half marathon recently. He's been training hard. He ran a good cross country just before Christmas. And here he is on his home patch, a race he's been aiming for. And there's Mo Farah. And just look at him. Just look closely. You'll see the expression on his face that you don't see when Mo's in complete control on the track. This is Mo Farah being at the mercy of other athletes, whereas normally the other athletes are at his mercy. He controls, he dictates, and he all, all, almost orchestrates these win races when he wins them. He's not orchestrating this today. I tell you, it's almost a look of panic on his face, Bren. There, it's like, what do I do here? This is a bit of a, a wake-up call. I, I've come here. I've had a, a great end to the year, and I wanted to come out and race well. And this really isn't going well. And it's a bigger look of panic than you saw when he fell in Rio and got himself up there because there he knew he was still in control. But the person really impressive here is Callum Hawkins. When you look back as far as Kaya, who beat him in those European Cross Country Championships. I mean, yes, it's a different course and it's a different style of race, but that's a huge distance back to a man that he finished a fair distance behind in Sardinia. So they're coming to complete the first of the long laps. They had the two short ones for long. So approaching kind of halfway in this race. So Callum Hawkins just had a little look behind to see who he's got for company. He's got Leonard Career, who was in that Olympic final with Mo Farah in the 10,000 meters. And Garrett Heath, the winner from last year, look at Mo, that's uh, a man working hard, he's now got himself uh, into second place as far as Great Britain are concerned, because he's just moved ahead of Johnny Taylor and uh, Dowie Griffiths, but he's still out of the top 10, there he is, 12th, so he's moved up 20 seconds behind the leaders, and uh, it's a hard day at the office for Mo Farah, but this sort of thing, you know, I, I know what you guys are saying, and, but, you know, and I, I think he will want to run as well as he can. He's, he's going to try as hard as he can, but I don't think he'll get that distressed afterwards. He knows what the big target is for the year, and he knows he came here, you know, he had to have a bit of downtime after the Olympics, and he's got to build up again, and he's in that process now. He knew coming here today was a risk in terms of trying to win it. I don't think any of us actually, we're the three of us sitting here, Actually, Paula thought he might win, but um, he knew it was going to be tough for him. I'm just surprised that he kind of started so slowly. Well, I think the, the, the interesting thing is that this is a race which Mo hasn't, hasn't aimed for. His race is in the summer. His races were last summer. And at the end of the day, the downtime that you talked about, Steve, is absolutely right. But I think it's a great reminder to come out this time of the year, early in the new year, he comes out, he runs against a bunch of quality athletes, and remember on the track, they're not that far behind Mo on the track when he wins, and here he is doing what I thought he would do today, he would stick to the task, he's working hard, he's working his way through the field, he knows this is not the norm, he's got a bunch of American athletes ahead of him, he'll be competing, because if you one thing that's defined Mo Farah's career is that he's always prepared to work harder than anybody else, and Callum Hawkins, he's setting this up for the other two athletes, Garrett Heath is running a quiet race in third place. Callum Hawkins is running strongly and running well. Career on his shoulder. They're very lucky that they've got an athlete who's running so quickly and he's prepared to do the work and they're sheltering behind him. So now it's about time that Callum starts thinking about the strategy of the race. He hasn't run away from the field, he's ahead of the field, but he's got to now think how he's going to do in the later stages. This is a great career opportunity for him. It's a great opportunity for him to win a big race, a big international race in front of his home crowd, and a big opportunity to take the scalp. The first time we've ever seen a knight of the realm running a cross-country race, Mo Farah, and he's further down the field, and to have Mo in, in the lower down the ranks and have him ahead of him, that's a great one for Callum.
Yeah, I mean, I think Mo might be trying to hand that back. It's weighing him down a little bit running around here today. But um, I think probably definitely the celebrations are, of the end of the year and the fact that he hasn't focused on this will be affecting the way that Mo's raced today. He won't have expected them to go off as hard and as fast as they did. And definitely that was in Callum Hawkins' plan. And he would have known that that was to his advantage to try and get this pace moving as quickly as possible. And yes, I agree that... Gareth Heath and Korea are having a little bit of, of a ride on the coattails of Callum Hawkins, but they're working hard and they're having to work very hard to maintain that contact. And I think Callum Hawkins knows that this is his best chance to try and win this race here today is to keep turning that screw in the middle of the race and keep making everybody work hard and run the finish out of them. So Callum Hawkins, when they complete this lap, they'll have two more big laps to go. And every now and then, particularly on the hills, he just gets a little bit of a lead, and then they sort of work hard to get back. Garrett Heath, though, is having to hang on to career, and if career lets Callum Hawkins go, and on this occasion, Callum may be sensing that that gap, because it is that is invisible elastic band, isn't it? And if you can snap it, and then uh, you get that lead that they can't hold back again. So Callum Hawkins using this bit of the course. Look there, career realizing, understanding, and the fact that career is just hanging on means that he now is pulling away from Garrett Heath and it's Garrett Heath who is losing contact and he'll see as they go across the stream and away and down the hill I expect that little lead to get a bit bigger so career hanging on to Callum Hawkins but the crowd doing their best great crowds here in Holyrood Park watching the local hero well he's he's from down the road in Glasgow but nonetheless flying the flag for Scotland and for Great Britain here two laps to go and he's getting a lot of support out there and he's also the key thing about lap courses whether it's for a marathon or whether it's for cross country here today is it gives you the opportunity to learn the course a little bit on each lap and what Callum Hawkins is learning is that he's the stronger up that hill every time around so he's learning that and he's storing that up and he will be using that to his advantage later on in the race we can see Kaya there just going through still a fair way back but is definitely making up ground on that lead 3-2 as is Mo Farah here in this group and Mo's working hard, and that's what is a familiar sight. Mo working hard like, like this every day of the year, really grafting now. He knows he's in not in top form. His his, his advisor and his, his coach and partner was, was talking about this yesterday, and they said he's clearly not in form. He's ahead of Andy Vernon, who's going through there, and he's ahead of the rest of the British team, apart from Callum Hawkins. But now this is a race, and it's about the strategy for Callum Hawkins. He's never won a big race like this before. He's never had such great athletes around him. And I think the one thing we're seeing already is that Callum Hawkins is running the finish out of last year's winner, Garrett Heath. The athlete who's come here on, this is his fourth occasion. Every time Garrett Heath has run here before, he's taken the scalp of Olympic champions in, by, by winning the race. And now he's not gonna win this one. He's suddenly started to slow. They're on the penultimate lap. Callum Hawkins has led for almost every step of the way, and the pressure of leading also tells. So now Callum's got to start thinking about how am I going to win this one? It was interesting. I mean, you're, you'd look at it and go, Mo Farah moved up there, he moved into seventh place, but he actually lost eight seconds on Callum Hawkins. Callum Hawkins moved eight seconds further away from Mo, if you took Mo as a. So that the front, they're going quicker, and despite the fact that people are changing positions behind them, these guys are really forging on. You can see there, USA and Great Britain, uh, first and second, USA winning uh, head of Europe, and it means it's all closing up in terms of the overall match standings. The gap between USA and Europe is now only 14 points, and that will change two laps to go. So very close in the overall match standings. Great Britain out of it, really, and down to those two is to see who comes out on top. The Americans started very dominantly in this race, but one or two just starting to slip back a little bit. So Hawkins leads. As Brendan was saying, the front runners curse, if you like. Have you got the strength? Have you got the ability to pull away? With does it, the fact that career is still close enough, you can hear the breathing, you can hear the footsteps occasionally, even though we're on the country, well aware that he's right there with him. And like Paula said, this is the section, Paula, where I think he's got a chance of moving away. He moves better over this bit of the ground and certainly goes better up the hill. He might just want to leave it till the last lap to make a big effort. But it'll be interesting to see whether he tries to get away here. 
Yeah, I think the key now is how he gauges his effort and how he manages what he has left in his legs. Because undoubtedly, the pace he set off at and the way he's attacked this race, both of these guys are tired. And you can just oh, see the way that Courier just jumped over there and almost grabbed the, the rope or the, the stake holding the rope into the ground um, and made Callum jump a little bit. But I think just letting him know that he's still there and he looks good still. He still does look comfortable, Courier, hanging in there. But yeah, the smart thing for Callum to do now would be to just back off a little bit, save something in his legs to really attack this section on the last and final lap. But this is exciting. This is exciting to see Callum Hawkins running so well there. And we talk about Mo Farah moving forward and moving on to the marathons and moving on to the roads. He's going to have a big challenge just to be the best British guy on the roads if Callum keeps on improving at this rate. And he is improving. And once again, he's doing what he's tried to do before. He's trying to stretch it on the tough part of the course. But Korea is on an easy ride, you know. He's just been following. He, when he jumped over the water there, he looked particularly comfortable. He's doing it in style, Callum Hawkins. He's trying to win this one. He's got great fans here. They're urging him along, but Korea is beginning to threaten. He's moving up onto his shoulder with comfort and with ease on occasion. These are the chances for Callum Hawkins. This little incline and this jump over the water. Can he do it again? And can he now? He looked, keeps looking over his shoulder. He's now got to think about tactics. How is he going to try? As they come down the hill, he'll hear the bell sound. One lap to go in front of his home crowd. Can he keep it going enough? Can he do something different on the last lap? Just by leading, he hasn't been able to break Korea. Korea's a minute faster than him, over 10,000 metres on the track. He's a better runner on the track than Callum Hawkins. So now we're going to find out who's better on the country. Is it Hawkins or is it Leonard Korea of, of America running just next to him? Callum Hawkins leads by just half a metre or so. The European champion, Kaya, has now moved into third spot. Chalanga giving chase, and as Garrett Heath just starts to drift back, he's made a brave defence here, and he got sucked into going out there really hard, Garrett Heath, and he's just paying for it a little bit. He might have half an eye on Mo Farah behind him, chasing. There's Mo Farah. He's working so hard. And, you know, for Mo, you wouldn't normally expect to see him uh, with Ilada's company next to him. So I think, you know, it's it's a tough day, as we said, for Mo. Sorry, it's uh, for Cheeky, but he's still sticking to the task as well as he can. He's now 36 seconds behind Callum Hawkins. And I'm loving this. I'm loving watching Callum Hawkins do his utmost to get away from Leonard Career. As Brendan said, Career on the track better pedigree, 13.15 at 5,000, a minute quicker at 10,000. Actually, Callum's new half marathon personal best is a bit better than Careers. He uh, also ran a personal best this year at 61 minutes, but this is here in Edinburgh in January. Callum Hawkins in front of a home crowd, now working really hard. He probably knows if he's going to win this, he needs to get a 10, 15 meter lead before they come onto that last downhill section. He's trying to win it now, he really is. He's thinking now, okay, he's settled a little on that last lap and you can see the intense look on his face. A yard or two is growing. Now, this is a bit of a chance for Callum Hawkins up that hill, but he didn't take that particularly well. Korea responded to him quickly. Now, a yard or two, can it grow further? Steve was describing earlier the distance runner's curse for the leader. Can you open enough yards? Can you dis disillusion the other athlete? And here they come. Look how hard he's working. Look at the look on his face. He's getting fantastic support, but he needs that fantastic support. That yard has grown to three or four. Is it enough? It just needs to grow a tiny bit more. I mean, it's much easier to actually break that distance on the cross country and on the road than it is on the track because you can always maintain that vision and that sight on the person in front of you and on the cross country with the twists and the turns you can build up that gap a little bit more in the mind of the person chasing and he's trying to do that at the moment Callum Hawkins is really working hard and wouldn't it be great to be able to see him going into a world cross country on a real tough cross country course this year unfortunately I don't think we're going to see that he doesn't want to make the trip out to Uganda so he will be moving on to focusing on the roads for the rest of the winter after these cross country races but it would be great to see him head into that with a strong victory here today but that gap just isn't quite big enough yet that's exactly what i was about to say this gap needs to be bigger career knows it and is closing again on how hawkins who made a massive effort to get away and he just wants to make sure here doesn't he because he knows how strong callum hawkins has been around this section so for the first time the american moves to the lead so hawkins tries to hang in there 
It is going to come down to a big kick. Does that mean the Kenyan, excuse me, former Kenyan running for America is worried about his kick here? And look at Callum Hawkins. This is great to see. Has he broken him this time? He's got to go hard round here, hard up the hill. Get about 15, 20 metres if he can. Callum Hawkins forging on. 400 metres ago and Callum Hawkins is digging deep. This is a bit of the course that he's tried to extend the lead. Now he's got a lead. A glance over his shoulder. He's sprinting along the top. The gap's growing and he comes to the last water jump, as it were. Can he get over it? Can he negotiate it? Is he strong enough? Well, this is brilliant running from Callum Hawkins, the man from Paisley being cheered by this home crowd here in Edinburgh has led from the very first step of this race a real test of cross-country ability but it's a test of his competitiveness a little slip there over this stream but he's got enough career of the USA trying hard to chase him home Mo Farah couldn't hold off Garrett last year America won this race and it could yet be America because career is coming hard and Callum Hawkins looks over his shoulder and he fights again has he got enough it's going to be tight on the line and career just gets it career of the USA just pips Callum Hawkins on the line well we said didn't we it had to be a big enough lead it looked big enough we thought it was big enough as Kaya comes in to take third just for a second around that top corner, a slip, a little slip across the stream. Did that just make him lose a little bit of momentum? That just gave career the thought. And that's all you need. You just need enough of a little thought that, hey, I can still catch him. Big finish from career to win it. We saw great sprint finish, sprint finish from Garrett last year. He's having to settle for sixth on this occasion. And then Mo Farah, hard work for Mo today. 46 seconds behind the winner, finishes in seventh place to be the second man home for Great Britain today. That was hard. Isn't it funny that uh, Heath and Farah still very close in terms of the race this year, but not one and two, it was six and seventh this time. Well, what a finish we had there. As we see Andy Vernon, I know Andy's been suffering with a, a bit of cold as well. I think uh, 12th, maybe not a true reflection of his form at the minute. Well, what a finish we had there. Such a shame for Callum Hawkins. He was third at the European Championships and it looked as though he had victory in his grasp here today. But Leonard Career is a fine athlete and we said when it came down to a sprint finish, it might just be that the American might have enough. We needed a big gap at the end. It wasn't quite there. And all of a sudden, when Callum Hawkins thought he'd had it won, there comes the challenge. He tries to respond, and then Career again was able to come back again. The crowd doing their best to cheering to the line, but not quite enough. But what a performance from Callum Hawkins. And these two well ahead of the rest. So it was America winning. Callum Hawkins second. So let's tidy all of that up. Career was in that Olympic final, as we said, over 10,000 metres, a long way behind Mo Farah on that occasion, a long way ahead of him today. 24 minutes and three seconds is winning time. Callum Hawkins in the end, just one second behind. The European champion, Aris Kaya, finishing in third place. Mo Farah just behind Garrett Heath, the two of them. One and two last year, as I said, six and seventh in 2017. But there's a new king of the Edinburgh cross country and it is Leonard Career. But Callum Hawkins ran him so close. That was a fantastic race to watch. Congratulations, Leonard. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like the race. I, I can't believe I won. I was already saying I'm number two. I knew I was going number two. But I said, let me give it all and make sure that he beats me by like half a second, but I realised I'm... It never looked like you said I'm number two, and it didn't feel like that to you, I imagine, Callum, either. He, you know, you ran him close, and that gap did appear at one point to have got big enough. Yeah, but I, I, I was just putting it all out there, and uh, I was really tired at the end, but it was a really fun race, and 
this guy just wouldn't leave me alone. I was hoping, I was putting everything in it just to drop him, but he was a stronger man than the day and we made some good good racing. You made a little bit of headway, didn't you, going up the last hill and it looked like you did, you did open the gap, but were there any tactics on that last lap that you were trying to employ to, to get rid of Leonard? Uh, a little bit, push it on the, I made a, a dig just going into the, the first lap on that big drag there. I was just trying to take every opportunity with every little hill in every corner to get by him, but hard to get away from him, but he just hung in there and was too strong for me in the end. After a fantastic 2016, this is a great start to 2017. At the moment, your plan still not to compete in the World Cross Country? No, definitely not doing the Worlds. It's all gearing up for the, the World Championships in London, doing the marathon there. I've been pre-selected, so that's what my main aim is for the year. OK, well, hopefully you'll have many more hotly contested races like that in 2017. Well done, guys. That was thoroughly entertaining. Thank you so much. OK, let's get out to, to Steve, who's going to just mop up the whole thing for us and find out the team scores. Have they changed dramatically, Steve? Well, it was all very exciting in the end. The USA winning that race with 37 points, led by Leonard there. Great Britain and Europe, identical points, 70 points. But Charlie Holson was our last counter in 18th place, ahead of Carlos Mayo of Europe, who was 19th. So therefore, Great Britain in the second place in that particular race. So we add all of that into the overall total, and it's the USA just by three points ahead of Europe. They win the challenge in 2017. Great performance from them, really kicked off by their junior men. They built up a big lead in the very first race of the afternoon, and that was enough so that they could hold on in the end despite the European women doing so well and then doing pretty well in that men's race as well, but not good enough in the end. And Great Britain having to settle for third with 208 points. Well, I've been joined up here by Sir Mo. Uh, well done, Mo. That looked like it was pretty hard work out there today. Yeah, nice no, it's hard day in the office. Um, just got to be honest with yourself. It's not the, what I wanted, but it's where I am. And uh, got quite a lot of work to do, but to be honest, if it you, was hard. You, you mentioned honesty a couple of times. So if you're being honest with yourself, are you, are you a little bit behind where you would be, say, in a, in a normal calendar year, just because of what has happened to you in the last 16 months or so, in the last extraordinary few months? Yeah, no, definitely. I'm, I'm definitely a little bit behind. Um, yeah, the last bit of training hasn't gone as well as I wanted. Uh, but you know, it's all about team event, and I, you know, I want to come out here, represent my country, and and you know, help the guys. But Early on, it was like one of those things where, you know, 10 days beforehand, it's like, what do I do? You can't, I did a session, and I knew from that, things, yeah, it's going to be a hard day, but at the same time, you know, I wanted to come out here, represent my country, and run with the guys. It's all about, you know, having fun, and cross country is where it started for me. Yeah, and we saw you, even we see that footage, fantastic footage of you as a kid, enjoying the cross country, winning the cross country as a 14, 15 year old. Does it evoke those memories of why you first started in this sport? Yeah, no, definitely. I love the sport, so I, I, um, but you know, at the same time, it's like, you know, everything, you have to work hard and graft, and you know, it's give, give the youngsters something as well. You know, anyone who can come along here, Edinburgh, and watch you and, and see, you know, see you working. So you're heading into a tough period of training now. What's the next on the agenda and the calendar for Mo? Um, I'm going to go back home and then uh, go back and then hopefully, you know, to plan my um, next training camp. And got quite a bit of work to do, so I need to start planning. And, you know, I've got a great team behind me, so I'm not panicking at this point. It's early season. It's January. You know, I've got to, I've got to get ready for London 2017. That's the main aim, but at the same time, you know. Um, it's hard work. <laughs> and everybody wants a piece of you, including the palace. Do you know the date of your investiture yet? No, yet, no, yet. I'm not even thinking that yet. No, <laughs> do you know who you're taking? Because, you know, if you've got the a spare wife, ticket... Definitely, oh, definitely okay. the wife, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you've got enough yeah. kids to choose from anyway. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to take my kids there, but I think they're too, to un uh, too young to understand. Okay. Uh, maybe Rihanna or, and my wife. Maybe. OK, well, look, good awesome. luck with that. Good luck with the rest of your year. 2016 was fantastic. Let's hope 2017 for you uh, produces more goods, more golds and, uh, of course, more success. And cool. there's more than Thank athletics you. on the BBC in 2017. We've got a cracking year of sport coming up.